Drawing the Ideal Retired Person, a Personal Construct Psychology Technique by Heather Moran. The aim of this technique is to explore the possibilities that being retired could bring through sketching out the non-ideal and ideal retired person and through noting what might help you move towards the ideal retired person. So, from a personal construct psychology point of view, why would we do this? Retirement is a significant shift in life, involving a change in, and potentially a loss of, a core role. So Kelly's definition of guilt is likely to be useful here. Guilt is the awareness of dislodgement of the self from one's core role structure. So what does he mean by dislodgement of the self? And what about one's core role structure? Well, in terms of PCP, what Kelly suggested was that we have roles in life and that we develop construing that go with those roles. And guilt is about knowing the role and not finding oneself able to fulfil it in some way. So that could be, uh, for instance, having been a child and facing the death of a parent. So no longer are you going to be a child in the same way. The core role structure is the set of constructs that are connected and where that fits with all your other core constructs. And having a role is a really important thing to us, particularly when it's related to our work. So retiring from work brings new potential risks and they're mental and physical in terms of health. They may involve the loss of people, also the loss of routine and a sense of purpose. So this change is highly significant and is going to involve quite a lot of our construing system. For instance, if you've got up for work every day on a weekday for years, even that change is very significant for you. And often that's something that people look forward to. But if you've got no purpose, then waking up in the morning may not be fun anymore. It's not the same as having a holiday. Of course, it would be helpful to anticipate a future self and role so that you can address issues before you arrive at that position. It would be helpful to anticipate a future self and a role so that you can address issues before you arrive at that position. It can facilitate the adjustment if you start gradually by moving in that direction, hopefully reducing fear or threat to anxiety or leading to the aggressive exploration of new possibilities. And remember that Kellyan aggression is exploring with gusto, I think of it, you know, embracing new opportunities and having a look around and seeing what suits you. So the risk of threat to our sense of self can be reduced by developing a construing system which will support our adjustment, reducing surprises and considering alternatives in advance. This, like drawing the ideal self, is a four-part process. First of all, you will explore the non-ideal retired person, then the ideal retired person, and then do a rating scale identifying supportive strategies to support movement towards the ideal retired person. And then, if you're completing it alone, there's a period of consideration where you look at what you found out, or discussion if you're completing it with another person. So what aspects of life have been included in drawing the ideal retirement? Well, the first one, like drawing the ideal self, is personality. What kind of person is this? And then a bag, because our bags contain personal essentials. So inviting you to think what kind of essentials will be needed for this new way of life. And then money, because there'll be a new relationship with money, 
which will be required to accommodate a reduced income. There may be adjustments to relationships within the family. So what will the family life look like when there's more time available? And then similarly, what will friendships be like? Because some friendships will currently be through work. So what sort of friendships would suit the new way of living? Next, there'll be hobbies and interests. So with more time available, what kind of interests will you pursue? And then health, which might be quite a big one because changes are more likely in older age. So will there be changes to your self-care? And then a greatest fear. So what will this retired person fear? And finally, what's their history? How did they come to be like this? And what lies ahead for them in the future? So now let's go through the process. And step one is exploring the non-ideal retired person. So this has the heading, the kind of retired person I don't want to be like. And in my case, I said that was somebody who was bored, who was in all the time and alone all the time. So what's in her bag? She's got junk. She doesn't know really because she doesn't go anywhere. What's her relationship with money? Well, she's run out of savings and has no income. What's she like with her family? Separated and not connected. How about with her friends? She just stays on her own. She doesn't see them. What are her interests and hobbies? Only TV, just sits and watches. How about health? She has heart problems, aches and pains all the time, and she's weak. And what's her greatest fear? Death. What's her history? How did she come to be like this? She didn't prepare and act to get ready for a new phase. Her worst fear will come true earlier and she will die unhappy. If you look at that together, you can see there's an importance of connection and separation. And there's also something about not having anything to do that's very meaningful and then not looking after her health or her money. Now we're going to do step two, which is to explore the ideal retired person. So this is the kind of retired person I do want to be like who is happy, healthy and learning new things. And in the drawing, it's a person who's got a calendar with lots of things to do written on it.
She's got a bag that seems to be very purposeful, which has a flask and a book, a notebook and pen, a waterproof coat, a phone to find things to do and a passport. And it's a rucksack so she can carry a lot of things. In terms of money, she knows how much she has and spends wisely. With family, she sees them separately and also sees them together. With friends, she sees them regularly to do things and to talk. Her interests and hobbies are arts and crafts, learning, writing, leisure cycling, walking to sea places and knitting and crochet. In terms of her health, she's fit and healthy. And her greatest fear is not having enough time. What's her history? How did she come to be like this? Well, she prepared herself well, thought and planned ahead. And in the future, She's going to have a happy life, well lived. She achieved some of the things she wanted to. So looking at that as a whole, there are themes of being very busy and having lots of activities to do, of seeing people both in the family and friendships and being wise and planning and being able to keep up her level of fitness and health. Now we're moving on to step three, a rating scale and identifying strategies to support movement towards the ideal retired person. So just like in drawing the ideal self, we lay the pictures out so they're side by side with the ideal on the right hand side because most of us read in this country from left to right. And then we'll have a rating scale in between them. The first point to place on there is now. So I would normally say something like, how do you see yourself now on this scale? If this side is the kind of retired person you don't want to be like, and this side is the kind of retired person you do want to be like, Whereabouts are you most of the time at the moment? And then what would be your ideal point on this line? And what would you settle for? And in this case, the now is approximately in the middle and the settle for and the ideal are the same point and they're very much like the ideal retired person. And then choose some different time points. So here I've included where do you think you were last year and where do you think you'll be next year? When I completed this, we were part way through the COVID pandemic. So the difference between now and next year would be that COVID-19 is controlled better so that I can go out and travel. Asking the person what will lead to smaller changes is very important because they might have a clear picture of what's going to affect that and lead to them being much closer to their ideal.
Now you can put as many time points as you like on here or use it to get different people's views. So where would somebody else rate you on this scale? So what about your partner? Where would they put you? How about your parent or your child? Where would they rate you on this scale? Or you can go for different time points. So here I've just used the time points and look at the difference between now and ideal. That's the important thing because how are you going to get from where you are now to where you want to be? And in my case, I said that what I could do to facilitate that move is I could travel, I could join things, I could get fitter and I could see more people. The next question is what could other people to help you make that move? And I said they could come with me to do things and share the enjoyment. They could tell me about things that I could try and they could also remind me to be healthy. So the final part of this is a consideration of what you've got in front of you. And if you're completing it alone, you'll just be thinking about it and noticing the patterns. Or if you're doing it with another person, you might invite them to tell you what patterns they can see and you might suggest some and then discuss those differences or similarities. So here are some things you can think about with it. Firstly, how far are you now? from your ideal and settle for points. A long way implies that there's much to be done and a short way suggests less adjustment will be needed. But remember that these points are not fixed. So a change in one may lead to two or three things changing as well. For instance, if I started going out and making friends, we might do things together and I would be more active and have things on my calendar. So a number of things can move together, or it may be that by changing something very significant, such as health, all kinds of things happen. So wherever the ratings are now may not be where they'll stay within the next six months, say. You can think about what you can do and when you can start working towards your ideal. Is it today? Is it in a couple of weeks? Does something else need to happen first? And then thirdly, how easily can you bring other people on board to support the moves that you want to make? And then who are those people and how can you ask for their support? And then can you identify the first thing that you could do? So this is not a finite list. There are many ways you could look at this and have consideration of what kind of things will be needed and how they can be juggled along so that movement can happen. And that's it. I hope you have a go really. However old you are, thinking about your retirement is relevant. That sounds like I'm trying to sell you a pension, which I'm not. But it, you know, we will all eventually stop work or change work. So it's worth thinking about in advance and consider the things that are going to be very important to you. You could do a different version. You could do a self characterization of yourself as a retired person. You could also do some grids and explore it that way. But this is quite a simple way. Um, and for me, I always go for things that have got pictures because then I find it easier to remember the content. So have a go. If you find it useful, I'd really like to know. That's great.